Okay, we're going to call to order uh, the public board meeting. Um, is there a roll call, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Wabi. Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. And I understand Mr. Nickazison is on his way. Uh, Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. All right, we do uh, have a quorum. Thank you, Tim. Um, is there a motion for approval of the journal of the preceding meeting? So moved. Second. Thank you. Approved. Um, I do not have any comments this evening, so we're going to move on to a report of the board committees. Um, the first committee report is the uh, report of the first meeting of the 2023 ad hoc board committee meeting. The 2023 ad hoc board committee met on May 15th, 2023 at 541 p.m. The meeting was attended by all of the members of the 2023 ad hoc board committee. Myself and trustees Wilson, Evans, and Wabi. Staff in attendance were Executive Director Brian Holscher and HR Director Tracy Coleman. I called roll and had no further comments. There were no minutes to approve, and the agenda items were as follows. In closed session at approximately <clears throat> 5.42 p.m., I requested a motion, I'm sorry, I requested a motion to move into closed, se closed session to discuss personnel actions under Section 610.021, 6, subsection 3 of the Revised Statutes of Missouri. Trustee Wabi motion and Trustee Evan seconded the motion. Roll call of the trustees in attendance approved the motion. <laughs> At approximately 6.54 p.m., I requested a motion to end closed session and to return to open session. Trustee Wabi motioned and Trustee Evans seconded the motion. Roll call of all trustees in attendance approved the motion. Adjournment. I adjourned the meeting at 6.54 p.m. The next committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for June 20, 2023 at 8 a.m. This concludes the 2023 Ad Hoc Board Committee Comments Report. Uh, in Trustee Nickazison's absence, I'm going to move on with two reports of the Program Management Committee. Uh, the first is for the special meeting, uh, which was held on May 25th, 2023. The Program Management Committee met on May 25th, 2023 at 537 p.m. The meeting was attended by Trustees Nickazison, Wilson, Evans, and myself with Trustee Wabi and Watson online. Chairperson Nickazison called roll and had no further comments. A special meeting of the Program Management Committee was held to discuss proposed ordinance 16090 currently being held for adoption. The ordinance for the Bissell and Lee May fluidized bed incinerator project will provide for the initial appropriation of $101 million and a total appropriation of $900 million for the project and authorize a design build contract with <clears throat> Cosin Plocker LLC. Engineering staff provided a presentation on the project. Director of Engineering Rich Underfirth discussed project details and timelines leading up to the ordinance request. Jay Hoskins, Assistant Director of Engineering, then discussed how staff arrived at the solution to replace the existing multiple hearth incinerator process and new fluidized bed incinerator technology. Jay discussed both current operations and regulations, as well as future regulations impacting decisions. Brad Navoy, Assistant Director of Engineering, then reviewed the district's procurement process for the contract and reviewed circumstances impacting the escalation in costs on the project. Brett Berthold, Director of Operations, concluded the presentation with staff's recommendation to proceed with contract authorization and appropriation for the Bissell and Lee May fluidized bed incinerator project. Shauna Paradis, Manager of Diversity, then provided information regarding the MWBE subcontractor evaluation for the project and responses to public inquiries and questions regarding the review. Staff entertained and answered questions from the board during and after the presentations. The next committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for May 30th, 2023. The meeting was adjourned at 6.50 p.m. This concludes the Program Management Board comments report. Um, additionally, we have our regular Program Management Committee report. The Program Management Committee met on May 30th, 2023 at 7.05 a.m. The meeting was attended by Trustees Nicosison, Evans, and Wilson with myself online. Chairperson Wilson called roll and had no further comments. The minutes of the May 2nd, 2023 Program Management meeting were approved. The agenda items to be introduced tonight were presented and discussed, including a detailed discussion regarding the following items. Ordinance number 16145. Staff provided details of a CSO volume reduction green infrastructure grant being awarded to reduce combined sewer overflows to the Mississippi 
River per the consent decree. Staff provided details on the grant being awarded to 1501 Washington Avenue LLC for volume reducing improvement. Ordinance number 16146, St. George Creek Sanitary Relief. Staff discussed this unplanned supplemental appropriation of $100,000 to an existing project being constructed by Keeley Construction Group. The supplemental request is required to complete the construction due to additional costs for Class A rock excavation and additional pavement requirements requested by St. Louis County Highway. Ordinance number 16149. Staff requested appropriation for funding of the annual fiscal year 2024 wastewater infrastructure repair program. Staff then gave an update on the MWBE participation for the fiscal year 2023. Ordinance numbers 16150. Staff reviewed the details of the Gravoy Creek Sanitary Relief Project currently in easement acquisition. Staff has been unable to obtain all necessary property rights through negotiation. Staff is requesting authorization from the board to move forward with condemnation efforts on five parcels to allow the projects to remain on schedule. The project schedules are critical to ensure compliance with the district's consent decree. The next committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for July 5th, 2023. The meeting was adjourned at 716 AM. This concludes the program management board comments report. Uh, we're gonna move on to the report of the finance committee. Oh, thank you. Uh, Finance Committee met on May 30, 2023 at 726 a.m. The meeting was attended by Trustees Wilson, myself, Nick Azison, and Trustee Fair and Watson online. I call roll and I know for the comments. The minutes of the May 2nd, 2023 Finance Committee meeting were approved. The first item on the agenda was the quarterly pension review was presented by Mike Comstock of Aon. Compensation and defined contribution plans for the first quarter of 2023 and year to date 2023. A defined benefit plan assets returned 5.9% in the quarter, exceeding the policy, policy benchmark of 4.9%. For calendar year 2023, the plan returned 14.4% below the policy benchmark, excuse me, a negative 14.4% uh, below the policy benchmark of negative 12.7%. Equity and fixed income benchmarks both down double digits for the year. Next item, Secretary Treasurer Tim Snoke reviewed the district's operating fund portfolio as of May 25, 2023. Tim indicated that the portfolio is in compliance with the district investment policy. The next committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for Tuesday, July 5th, 2023. The meeting was adjourned at 7.31 a.m. This includes a finance committee at board comments report. Thank you, Trustee Evans. Uh, we're going to move forward with the Stakeholder Relations Committee report. Uh, Trustee Wilson. Thank you. Uh, Stakeholder Relations Committee meeting board's comments report. The Stakeholder Relations Committee met on May 30th, 2023 at 7.43 a.m. The meeting was attended by Chairperson Wilson, Trustees Evans and Nicholson, and online with Trustees Fair and Watson. Chairperson Wilson called roll and had no further comments. The minutes of the May 2nd, 2023 Stakeholder Relations Committee meeting were voted on and approved. The agenda and discussion items were as follows. Resolution number 3845, Federal Legislative Consulting Services. This re resolution authorized the renewal of the contract with Cardinal Point Partners, LLC, for federal legislative services for the fourth of four <coughs> option years. Resolution numbers 3841 through 3844, General Legal Services. These resolutions authorized the renewal of a contract with Armstrong Teasdale LLP, Reinerson, Seuss, Schnurbush and Champion LLC, Thompson Coburn LLC, White Coleman and Associates LLC for general legal services. Closed session. At approximately 7.48 a.m., Chairperson Wilson requested a motion to move into closed session to discuss legal, confidential, or privileged matters under Section 610.021, subparagraph 1, uh, RSMO 1988 Supplement, and personnel actions under Section 610.021, subparagraph 3, revised State of Missouri, and all trustees concurred. At approximately 9.26 a.m., Chairperson Wilson requested a motion to end closed session and return to open session, and all trustees concurred. Adjournment. The meeting was adjourned at 9.27 a.m. 
next committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for July 5th, 2023. This concludes the Stakeholder Relations Committee Board comments report. Thank you. Uh, we don't have a report of the executive director this evening, so <coughs> we're going to move forward to comments for the, from the public. We have one. Uh, Mr. Trakis. Sir, you're reminded that comments are limited to five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. I also want to thank you for your service. Looking at your agenda, uh, your job is daunting, and uh, I'm grateful that you're willing to serve. Madam Chair, with your permission, I would like to provide to your administrative assistant, Ms. Camillo, the original of the letter I sent you by electronic mail today. You may. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Also, let the record reflect that I provided copies for the other board members. Um, I'm sure you all know why I'm here tonight uh, to talk about the incinerator project that is under consideration before you currently. I encourage you all to take the time to read what is a multi page letter, but it is a comprehensive rebuttal to some of the questions raised by your uh, public affairs uh, director, Ms. McCoy who I've had communication with, and we've set up some follow-up meetings, so I'm grateful for that as well. Uh, but it is, a, like I said, a comprehensive rebuttal with citations to authority to support some of the representations I made in my May 11th public relations release. Um, I want to just touch on briefly this idea of capture, the concept of capture, and explain if you don't know what I'm referring to. Capture typically, when it's used, refers to governmental regulatory agencies responsible for oversight or regulation within certain disciplines, whether it's the Environmental Protection Agency, Department of Transportation, Department of Interior. The idea of capture is those entities and the people that work within them sometimes can be captured, meaning they're um, unduly influenced by the very entities they're responsible to oversee and regulate. And the reason I bring that up is the 40th president of the United States gave us the term trust but verify. Coupled with the idea of capture, I encourage you to be trusting but also inquisitive and make sure you verify representations that have been made to you with respect to the ad hoc committee and the team, the, uh, the team that has made its recommendation with respect to the incinerator project because all too often it's easy to just defer to those that we think, um, and I have no doubt that, that they may well be acting in good faith. I just question the conclusions they reach. So I encourage you to read the letter, um, access the authority cited, and then um, determine if you need, as I believe, to look into this matter much, much deeper. The letter um, clearly adds detail to my representations with respect to whether or not the technology recommended is the best going forward, the environmental impact, the uh, impact of forever chemicals, the cost, obviously, um, now three times what it was originally projected to be, and then alternative sources of funding. All of those are uh, addressed in detail. And I, again, encourage you to, to read it, spend some time with it, and then um, make the effort to use independent sources to confirm or at least find out whether or not um, the recommendations that are before you are, in fact, the best way to go forward. I obviously don't, do not believe they are, but I think it's important that um, you determine that yourselves. And obviously, I'm encouraged by the idea that you intend to have some committee, I'm sorry, community input from those affected, whether it's the city of St. Louis or the district I represent in South County, uh, District 6. I mean, we have school districts, we have residents literally next door to your facility. So any environmental impact is important. And the cost, given what we're talking about, the county is under a $40 million deficit right now. What you're talking about, a billion dollars, uh, is something that needs to be scrutinized. And so I just ask that you do all that before you come to any conclusions. Vet this matter fully so that 
you can make a good faith informed decision as to what is the best way forward. I uh, respectfully disagree with the recommendation that's put before you currently and ask that you do your due diligence, make sure that you're fully advised in the premises before you make any decision. Again, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. That was our only comment from the public. We do have uh, a submission of a public hearing report. Uh, this is from the Finding a Fact Committee. At the, budget, at the budget, user charge, capital improvement and replacement, and tax rate public hearing held on May 11, 2023, a Finding a Fact Committee consisting of trustees Evans, Fair, and Wabi were appointed to determine that the proposed taxes should be levied, assessed, and collected <coughs> as recommended by staff. The committee members here review, I'm sorry, the committee members have reviewed the proposed tax rates and concluded that these taxes are necessary to be levied, assessed, and collected in the amounts requested to meet the district's operating and capital requirements of both the districts and the various subdistricts. Uh, with that, we'll move on to communications. There are none. And so uh, we have the consent agenda. All right, thank you. And then I'll let the record reflect that. Uh, Trustee Nikazison uh, is present, so we will move forward with the consent agenda, which uh, tonight is items 10 through 42. Is there any board member who would like to pull an item for a separate vote? Hearing none, is there a motion for adoption? So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Wabi. Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Nikazison? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. All right, consent agenda. Is adopted. We'll now move to new business and we'll start with ordinances and item 43, the introduction of ordinance number 16145, authorizing the district to enter into an agreement with 1501 Washington Avenue LLC for cost sharing for green infrastructure construction and the CSO volume reduction of green infrastructure, last, the last hotel project in the city of St. Louis. Is there a motion for introduction? So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Wabi. Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Nikazison? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. Item 44 is the introduction of ordinance number 16146, a supplemental appropriation of $100,000 from the Sanitary Replacement Fund to be used for sanitary sewer construction, the St. George Creek Sanitary Relief Project in unincorporated St. Louis County, and authorizing the district to appropriate additional funds to a contract with Keeley Construction Group. Ordinance number 16150 declaring the necessity for the acquisition of easements and temporary easements and certain real property within the district for the purpose of construction of sewers and related appurtenances, and the project known as GCO 6 Gravway Creek to Briarstone and Gate Sanitary Relief Phase 2 in the cities of Sunset Hill and unincorporated St. Louis County to serve the needs of residents of the area and authorizing staff to proceed with further condemnation efforts related to the project. Is there a motion for introduction? So moved. Second. Mr. Wabi? Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Nickazison? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. Item 49 is an introduction and adoption of Ordinance 16151, repealing Ordinance Number 15931, adopted May 12, 2022, and enacting a new ordinance in lieu of the rev prescribing the salary of the secretary treasurer of the district. Is there a motion for introduction? So move. Second. Mr. Wabi? Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Nixison? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. Uh, do I hear an objection to the suspension of the rule? Hearing none, is there a motion for adoption? So, so move. Second. Thank you, Mr. Wabi? Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Nixison? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I will move on to resolutions and item 50, the adoption of resolution 3838, expressing the Board of Trustees' appreciation to Sanjeev Shekhar for his 18 years of exemplary service to the district from September 27, 2004, to his retirement effective June 1, 2023. Is there a motion for adoption? So move. Second. Mr. Wabi. Aye. Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. Nickazison. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. Item 51 is the adoption of Resolution 3839, expressing the Board of Trustees' appreciation to Timothy Cox for his 26 years of exemplary service to the district from May 19, 1997 to his retirement effective June 1, 2023. Is there a motion for adoption? So moved. Second. Mr. Wabi? Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Nickazison? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. Item 52, the adoption of Resolution 3840, expressing the Board of Trustees' appreciation to Frank R. Schaefer for his 18 years of exemplary service to the district from January 24, 2005, his retirement effective June 1, 2023. Is there a motion for adoption? So moved. Second. Mr. Wabi? Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Nickazison? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. Item 53, the adoption of Resolution 3841, to exercise option year four of a contract previously authorized by Ordinance 15188, adopted June 13, 2019, that authorized the district to enter into a contract with Armstrong Teasdale to provide general legal services for the district. 
Is there a motion for adoption? So so, second. Mr. Wabi. Aye. Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. Nickazison. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Fair. Yes. And M54 is the adoption of resolution 3842 to exercise option year four of a contract previously authorized by ordinance 15190. Also adopted June 13, 2019, that authorized the district to enter into a contract with Rainierson, Seuss, Schnurbush, and Champion to provide general legal services for the district. Is there a motion for adoption? So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Wabi? Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gazisson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. And at 55, the adoption of resolution 3843 to exercise after year four of a contract previously authorized by ordinance 15191, also adopted June 13, 2019, that authorized the district to enter into a contract with Thompson Coburn provide general legal services for the district. Is there a motion for adoption? So moved. Second. Mr. Wabi. Aye. Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. Nickazison. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Fair. Yes. Item 56, the adoption of resolution 3844 to exercise after year three of a contract previously authorized by ordinance 15568, adopted December 10th, 2020, that authorized the district under into a contract with White, Coleman, and Associates to provide general legal services for the district. Is there a motion for adoption? So moved. Second. Mr. Wabi. Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Nickazison? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. And item 57, the adoption of resolution 3845 to exercise option year four of a contract previously authorized by ordinance 15153, adopted May 9th, 2019, that authorized the district under into a contract with Cardinal Point Partners to provide federal legislative services for the district. Is there a motion for adoption? So moved. So moved. Second. Mr. Wabi? Aye. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Nickazison? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Fair? Yes. All right, thank you. We have uh, no more items on the agenda tonight. Yeah. All right, if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you all. Thank you all.